Welcome back friends, Keenan here. Thanks for joining me. Today I have a special video. I'm gonna talk about my interaction with meeting Investment Joy. Now, I was super excited to meet Investment Joy and I got the opportunity to go out to Las Vegas and meet Investment Joy. And let me tell you, it was a doozy. Uh, totally not what I expected. A lot of things happened. A lot of drama that I'll air throughout these couple of clips. I have a few more clips besides this one, but this is the one to start off all of them. And uh, I'm going to go over the whole event throughout the next few weeks. But I wanted to start out with Investment Joy because I'm sure that's the one you want to know about the most. First day I met Investment Joy, he was in the lobby talking to some other people from this conference, and I walked right by him. I didn't even, I saw him and I didn't even know what to say, so I walked right by him. It's kind of funny. My wife's like, you're going to say anything? And I'm like, no. And so that was, that was the first day. The second day, we had a mixer, and I got, I got to meet him at the mixer. And every time I tried to talk to him, he would get pulled away by somebody else. And finally, I was able to walk up while he was talking to a couple people. And... I was listening to him. I wanted to listen to him. I wanted to get to know him. I like. I couldn't tell if the YouTube channel was him or if he had a different personality. You never know with YouTube. Sometimes people on YouTube are different in real life. They're they're not the same at all. And so a lot of you made that comment, like me, how I come across on this channel at that event. I was exactly like how I am. That's how I am. Um, but sometimes when you meet these YouTubers, it's not what you get. And so I was really curious to listen to him and get to know him before I just started throwing a camera in his face. So I was listening to him talk and these kids would ask him questions and he was actually very genuine. He was very helpful to them for what they were trying to know. And I thought that was really nice. And then what happened was these kids asked me a question, not knowing who I was, asked me if I owned a laundromat, and then all of a sudden I said yes, and then three questions into it, I finally had to get them to stop talking to me, and then by that time, Investment Joy had moved on to somebody else, so that didn't work for me. Then I got pulled away talking to some people, which I loved talking to all of you that I met there, um, and then he came up on me, and then by the time I got ready to turn and talk to him, he disappeared on me. So that was the end of the first night, really, and so the next day we were in this room, and I just had to suck it up. I mean, we kept looking at each other. That was a funny part. We kept looking at each other throughout the day, and we'd be like, hey, and he'd be like, hey, or we'd like nod. And it was like, it was like two, two titans. Now I know my channel's small, don't get me wrong, but money-wise and what I do-wise, I'm pretty well off, right? So it was like two titans, two big powers, like, not knowing how to interact even. Like we, we didn't know, he didn't know how I was and I didn't know how he was and we didn't, it was funny. It was really funny. It was almost awkward. It's like a weird date, right? And so I just didn't, I finally just had to break down and go up to him and I, I started off by saying, you know, hey, the little digs I do on my channel about delicious quarters and, you know, um, there's a quarter for brand and it's just picking up quarters. I do those digs to kind of get a little camaraderie between our channels. So the, the little digs I do is because it seems to work good for these channels. And I, I figured we could get a camaraderie going over the next few years, right? He goes, don't worry about it. I don't mind that. I understand. And I thought that was really big of him because you never know. <laughs> he could have been really pissed at me. So that was really our first interaction. I asked him some other, per, not personal questions, but questions kind of like related to my channel. Not by getting subscribers. I don't want to know that. It was some other issues I have that are really not subscriber based. They're just other, like, how did you do this when your channel was small? And just little things, not thumbnails, none of that. It was, it was more, it was a more detail on another subject. And he helped me out. He gave me some ideas, some pointers. My light just went out by the way. So hopefully you can still see me. So I really liked that. And that was kind of the end of that again, because another person came up and these people were paying to be there. I wanted them to get their money's worth and I didn't want to hog them. And so, Throughout a couple more times, I talked to him a little bit. And then later the next, that night or the next day, we had an issue happen and it brought us talking to each other. So, so that night, you know, my wife and I go to get something to eat that afternoon. And I was talking to my wife after being around Brandon a couple times, I told her, I said, I'm not gonna film him. And she goes, why is that? And I said, I don't wanna be like everybody else. And it was really hard for me to watch so many people use Brandon. 
to use a human being just to further their own good. A couple people were sincere, but a couple people were just straight out of being, uh, I don't even know what to term it, like just, just disgusting. And I'm not that person. Like I started YouTube to show you how laundromats work, to show you how I invest money and to hopefully give you some pointers to get you out of the nine to five or help you make a little extra money, you know? And then some of it's entertainment. You follow along and get to see the fun things, you know? I, didn't, I, don't, I don't need to have a million subscribers. I don't need to have two million subscribers. I, I'm at 10,000 right now and I have 10,000 awesome fans. I love it. I love you. I love that you tune in. I love the interactions. I love the comments, good, bad, and the ugly. But I don't need to whore out a person and throw it on my channel to make me better. I'm not doing that. And if that's what YouTube is and social media is, then I'm done. I mean, I'm done. And that's, that's what I told my wife. I said, I am not doing this to this guy after I met him and talked to him a few times and realized who he really is. You know, you, you start to realize after you talk to him, I mean, he's homeschooled and he's an introvert for the most part. And he's got a nice little family and he lives in a really religious area, community. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a bad bone in his body. I mean, I'm not even kidding. Like, I look like a prick. I mean, I look like a straight up prick compared to Brandon. Like, that's what I told my wife. I'm like, I mean, I'm a nice person, don't get me wrong, but I have street smarts. I've been beat up in my life. I, I've had to fight back for things. I'm pretty hardened, okay? He's like a five-year-old child that has, has sees no evil in anybody. Sees no, he's, he's just really pure. It's really weird when you're around him. Like, it's really a strange interaction because he's just very, like, like green almost. But he's smart, and he invests money, and he's making money, and he has, he has a very successful business, obviously. But people just take advantage of him, and, he, and he's just like, okay. And they, would, and they would just move him around, and I'd be like, why are they doing this? this? I wanted to beat some people up. I mean, I was kind of so pissed. I wanted to be his bodyguard and just beat some people up over this. I was like, you know, have some respect for this guy, you know, show him some respect. They didn't, they didn't show him any respect. And some people did, but man, they were just whoring this poor kid out. And I just, I told Brandon, I said, I'm not filming you. And the next day when I talked to him, I said, I'm not filming you. I'm not, I was going to film and ask you questions. Now, for the people that wrote questions wanted me to ask them, I did ask them those questions. I will put that in another clip, but I didn't film it. I didn't film our interactions. And the reason is, is because I didn't want to be like them. Like after you meet Brandon, he's, he's really a really nice person. I mean, really nice person. And he's really helpful. Like, it was just crazy. Like, I mean, it was told, I didn't expect this really. I expected someone to be very guarded and not tell me stuff. If I would have asked him certain questions, he would have told me. And I didn't even want to ask him because I didn't want him to tell me. Like, he was very helpful, like insanely helpful. And I mean, he, people are just milking him and using him. And he knows it. Like, I brought this up to him. I said, you got to be careful. And he goes, oh, I know what's going on. I'm not, I go, man, I, I was just watching it unfold. And I was just, I, it just made me sick. It just made me really sick. And I don't want to be anything like that. So I'm not going to do that. But I wanted to make this video because I know a lot of you comment that, you know, he doesn't work with his hands. And that's one thing we talked about. And it was kind of cool was he said, you know, I admire you because you do work with your hands. I admire you because you don't mind getting dirty. He goes, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. I don't like getting dirty. And, and which we all know, right? He gave me the example. He was working at one of his car washes and he had to put a hand in a tank to clean it out or something. He goes, I did not like that. So that's not his channel. So when you guys make the comments, like the one comment people kept making was, you're the only one in the room that actually works with their hands. Pretty much true, okay? Except Joe Dan Reed, he gets dirty. Um, but that's the way certain people do their investments. Some people just, they just hire it all done and they just dollar cost average that price over their investment. And that's what they like to do. I'm a little different. I like a little bit of sweat equity. It's how I save money. It's how I get ahead. You know, it's how I can build a moat around my business by having my thing paid down a little bit and, and having the sweat equity. But um, he, he doesn't want to do that and he doesn't need to. So why would he? And so his channel is more about investing and, and having your investment work for you and investing your money and building something as opposed to somebody like me where you're out building the dryer wall or putting the dryers in or... And, uh, changing bearings in a washer for even, you know. 
But it was just very interesting when he said that because he's like, I admire you. I like how you're doing that. And But it was just interesting to meet him. And I really, from this video, one thing I would like everybody to do because he is going through a rough patch. And his rough patch is he was making videos and a video blew up. And when the video blew up, it blew up for several reasons. People like the underdog. They like the, the hometown kid. They like the fact that he went out and did something that they were interested in. And then his channel kind of went that way a little bit. And it went that way because he started to go the other direction. Well, I got to be bigger than everybody. I got to wear, like he wears a jacket suit, you know, jacket all the time. He changed his image and those people watching that video didn't change with him because they didn't, that's not what they wanted to watch, you know. So he's working on his channel. He's actually gearing it more towards investing and teaching people young stuff, you know, stuff you do when you're younger and all that's fun jazz. But he understands that. Like, he gets it. I mean, he, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, he gets it. So he doesn't beat around the bush. He gets that. But um, honestly, what I'd like to see everybody do, it. and like I said, it was hard. I, making this video was hard. This is like the fifth time I've had to make this video because I really broke down a couple times watching him get used so bad. And he's such a nice person. Like, watching them use them and and it just pissed me off i mean it really upset me you know and that's why i told him i said i would rather be friends with you than do videos with you so i'm just going to build a friendship with him throughout the next few years and see where that goes i'm not doing any videos with them i don't need to milk off him to build my channel i don't i'm not doing it i'm not using him like everybody else i'm not doing it i maybe that's wrong but i ain't doing it I'm sticking to my moral compass. I ain't doing it. That's where that investment joy interaction kind of went. Like I said, I just didn't expect it. I expected it. I don't know what I expected, but what I got was not what I expected. So he is actually a very down to earth and nice person. Like it's crazy. I thought kind of it was kind of an act maybe a little bit early on when I watched his videos. But once you meet him in person, it's no act. I mean, we should cheer up Brandon a little bit. Cause like I said, he was kind of down the last day cause some stuff went down and you know, it, it was kind of an eye opener for him. So if you could, for me, let's do Brandon a solid. Let's go all go over his videos, latest video, whatever it is, and go post a comment in that video. Hey, Brandon, I still like your channel. And if you don't like his channel, just, just give him a reason. Say, hey, do videos like this, you know. Go back to being the underdog. That's why I, to I told him to go back to being the underdog and just doing straight up being himself. I think if he was himself, People would flock to him again. I really do. Because when I was with him, I'm like, this guy's infectious. Like, his his actual personality is infectious. Not the selling Weeble and Robin Hood or whatever else he's promoting. You know, it was really a genuine person just wanting to help people. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not a guru. I'm not trying to sell anything. And he does have courses. And, that, and people pay. But they get something out of it. You know, they actually get value out of that. So they're willing to do that, and that's fine. You know, you can watch his videos and be entertained. So, like I said, it was just a really, it was really crazy. I, not what I expected at all. It really wasn't what I expected at all. So, thanks for watching. I hope you like this. Like always, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. I can always use more subscribers. Uh, that way we can get this message out there so people aren't getting duped into paying big money for information that really should be free. I mean, that's really the truth of this channel, um, especially after that weekend, realizing everything they're teaching you and they're making you pay, I'm teaching for free. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Like everything they're trying to tell you, people have a course or have this disc you watch or this, this course on the internet to watch. I'm giving all this information out for free. I mean, it is crazy. I, my wife even said, this is nuts, you know. You, you literally made a video about that. You made a video about that. And I'm going to start to be more repetitious on my videos because I'm going to start, you know, keep saying it, keep saying it for you because this stuff's out there. You don't need to go spend millions of dollars on mentors and all this other stuff. You can do this on your own. There's a lot of things you can do on your own. So anyway, like I said, thanks for watching. No, this is kind of a weird video. I didn't cry this time, so that was good, but...